recorded. And if I could just ask everybody to, um, if you are holding a current club officer role or a, or you would rather be known by your district officer role, please put it in your, the front of your name. Just want to get a feel for how many VPEs we have and what other background people are coming from. Thank you. Can you hear my coffee machine brewing in the background? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> I can't smell it either. I love the smell of freshly brewing coffee. Yes. It will, it will stop soon. Do we have any guests from other districts? Or I'm just asking if I need to put the D95 in my name or if it, it is. Um, I believe we, we don't have, we only have a D District 95 at the moment. Okay. It looks like we are about to take off. So good evening, dear fellow Toastmasters. And thank you for joining this workshop this evening. Your presence, as we have alluded on, already shows what a dedicated bunch of people you are. I am delighted to see both familiar faces and a couple of new faces too. So welcome, come on behalf of District 95 and our big VPE, Stefan Saho. He will be joining us very shortly. Let me briefly introduce myself. I have been a Toastmaster effectively since 2014. Although I sniffed to our organization already in 2010 in Aberdeen, Scotland. I gained Toastmaster footage from 2014 to 2016 in New Orleans area in Louisiana, the Southern US. And also in with Norris Toastmasters in Nuremberg from 2016 to 2017. Since then, I have been in Denmark. After I served as a district administration manager from 2019 to 2020, this is only really a, a fancy expression for a district secretary. I took a deep dive into event planning as a Toastmaster, and this is why Stefan Saho asked me to conduct this workshop. So I know this look ahead looks a little bit engineering like or an engineer's to-do list. As a matter of fact, I am an engineer of profession, but people, some people out with the engineer's profession tell me reassuringly that I'm actually quite fun for an engineer. So I take that as a compliment. So let's just walk through this. Um, we'll start with an, an equation, actually, a motivation equation, just to pinpoint a, an important aspect of this presentation. And then we'll go through the first bit of the presentation, which is called one step at a time. And this is for specifically for VPEs, of course, but could be used for any type of club officers or dedicated Toastmasters. Then there is a conversion um, to, uh, to the bigger scale events, and that is called the Odyssey Project. I hope Craig Curtis will be joining us because he's big on this Odyssey Project. I'll talk about it a little more detail later. And then we have some actual examples of events. Some of them already took place and uh, two of them are upcoming events. So there'll be little text and lots of illustrations. And Peter, my evaluator this evening, will let me know if I start to go into too much of a lecturing mode. 
So the idea here is to get input from you as an audience. So I will obviously ask you questions on the way. I try to put an emphasis between the link, uh, the link between VPE role and the public relation aspect. And I know that you know that you have valuable ideas and contributions. So let's look at the inspiration and objectives here. It is my hope that some of the work with events that I have undertaken and the shared learnings will inspire you to try out new things for your club or your area or your division or even on a district scale. So whatever love you have as a Toastmasters, bring it out there. Some of you are probably attending this workshop because you have an idea sitting at the back of your head. And please do respect your ideas and your creativity. Others may then be wondering what is going on on this slide. To the, your left is an illustration of what you may feel like if you're a little bit overwhelmed. Can I just see a show of hands of if anybody ever felt a little overwhelmed like our man here to the left? Okay, I'm not the only one. So to our right here, and you will notice it's only a four step uh, staircase, but I will lay out a five step process which seems to have worked for my Toastmaster projects to get past this feeling of overwhelm. But first, let's look at this from a VPE perspective. Now, here comes our equation. How does motivation work? The best motivation actually comes from within you. So don't wait for others to give you that motivation or let you generate your motivation. They may, of course, inspire you, cause you to wonder, nurture your motivation. But I am of the opinion that motivation is your own responsibility. In my view, Toastmasters is an exercise room, a gym, where we can work on our strengths and our weaknesses. And personally, I work with this notion of what if I got the opportunity to deploy my Toastmaster skills successfully in my own career. So talking about this positive mental mindset, what I think here uh, illustrated by the man's head, I like working in cross-functional teams, for instance, with different types of work groups. Could that be engineers, offshore, onshore, even managers sometimes? And I like to prove that I am at least as good as the guys. I speak like this because I am used to working in a male dominated environment. Then we add what I know or what you know. What I know is I know what it's like being one of the few female engineers on a project or for that matter on a drilling rig. There will be some extra attention from the guys. They may be forgiven forgiving on some matters, but they can also be tougher on me in certain aspects. And then we multiply it with what I do. And you know, from basic math, multiplier is just like a adding up big time, right? So your activity is really important for your motivations. The more you do, the more motivated you may actually feel. So what I do, I am a team player. I feel we are part of something together. I tease the guys. I'm one of the boys, but I'm also my own girl. So I try to deploy emotional intelligence, acknowledging that they want me to be part of the team and be part of our common success. I smile, I joke with them. I give them tactile and respectful feedback. I enjoy being part of a team and try to adhere to the established team rules. And furthermore, what I also do is to look active, actively for opportunities to deploy my Toastmaster skills and be a, a gentle influencer. That sounded good, didn't it? 
Okay, so coming back to our five step process. That step number one is realization. That was the man with, with all the red lines in his head or the circle, circular um, scribbles. And this is how we may feel as Toastmasters sometimes, as club officers or even in the higher offices as well. How do I engage this team? How do I keep track of how my team is doing? How do I motivate others? Okay, you remember I just said, yeah, it's not really your job to motivate others, but again, to some extent it is uh, if you are in a leading position. And how do I make sure that people stay motivated? How do I talk up an event or a meeting that is planned and make it a little bit exciting? So let's just take a step back from any stress here. What makes you feel good about Toastmasters? What makes you feel proud about Toastmasters? Where do you want to go with Toastmasters? And that could be a short term, or there could be this long-term vision. Even if we are a little bit scared of talking about long-term vision sometimes because somebody might remember what we said. But how can your choice with Toastmasters inspire others? And this is something you can actually deploy in your leadership role. And how cool would it be to inspire others? Okay, we may come up against this notion of like, how could I be a role model? Well, of course you could. We're moving on to step number two. This is called planned ahead. So what I want to say here is that your excitement about future meetings or upcoming events, it really starts now. Your excitement about the future member development as success or for your team, that, that excitement is apparent. So your fellow club officers or uh, team members are obviously Toastmasters of choice for your future club meetings here, at least until you have new members prepared for the job. So try to plan ahead, come in with your suggestions, show your schedule, at a club officers meeting and ask for contributions. And the same goes, of course, if you are higher up the hierarchy. Try to plan ahead, show people what are your thoughts on this. So coming back to our club meeting setting, in my view, must haves are, those are meeting theme, picked by the Toastmaster. If your Toastmasters are, are proving to be too slow sometimes, well, as a VPE, you can come in and suggest meeting themes. And also, I would recommend that you get your table topic masters to explore the theme picked for the meeting. Some things that would be nice to have. You can have or contemplate on icebreaker questions about the meeting theme for certain role takers in the meeting. This can really be a, a good thing if you have visitors from the outside so they feel like they get this little opportunity to, to just relax and chill with that, with that icebreaker question before they get um, on the stage. So I have a question for you. Would you rather assign roles in advance and, and hope for the best if people don't reply? Or would you prefer to reach out to people in advance for planning a meeting or an event? Any takers? Usually take, take, I take, take the second. You try to reach out to people in advance. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Peter? I would reach out in advance because I know people who would react badly against being put in a role without having been asked. Yes. Good. This was not a check question. 
by any means. It's just uh, I have seen different clubs deploy different things. So thank you for that feedback. Okay, step number three. There are actually three mini steps within step number three. And I don't think it can be said enough. Appreciation goes such a long way. It is so important. So start celebrate when your club members achieve an award. Be proud. You may even come out at the Facebook pages of area division level and brag about that achievement of your club members. You can also acknowledge the obvious development with new members when they follow your advice. And they present one speech per month, and then they take a meeting role at the other meeting. By that means, they, they really try to maximize the, the effect and, and get into the speed, up to speed with respect to what uh, meeting roles entail, and they also get speakers experience fast. It's also quite important to show appreciation for members taking a meeting role if the Toastmaster forgets to do so. Also, please acknowledge those that take more than one meeting role and those that come in and take a meeting role with short notice. It sounds very self-explanatory, but I think it's very easy for us to forget that, that kind of um, easy appreciation to be shown because people do notice that you notice and then it's like, it makes us feel a little bit better. And especially if you are in a club where you may be a bit strained or low on, on, on membership. It's, it's so important to nurture people's um, commitment and, and really appreciate what they're doing. Okay, so be a team player. Show appreciation for your fellow board members. And here's a little fun from All Board Toastmasters. You see how the Officers have been given cute nicknames. And uh, I did check with them before I went ahead and, and used it for this presentation. So all good. <laughs> so you may have noticed that Martina, Maserati Martina, is in this audience. And I wanna show a little extra appreciation for Martina. Even though she does not actually drive a Maserati at the moment, but her nickname comes from my appreciation of her sense of quality and finesse. In Olbot Toastmasters, we are two VPEs. We have fun and more surplus because of this. I think it's fair to say that we were a bit worn out at the start of the term, and that's why we chose to do it this way. So I can warmly recommend this path because you have you can share the meetings um, between you. Everything becomes a little bit easier. Okay. Effective evaluations. They are really quite necessary to provide our members value from their membership in our clubs. And knowing how to, to provide this constructive feedback is priceless. Plus, we actually make a better connection with people when we take time to provide them with quality feedback, not just in Toastmasters, but in the real world as well. One idea here could be to um, get a guest evaluator from the outside and hear that person's take on how effective are the evaluations really. Another idea may be to, to reach out to the, the speaker who received an evaluation and hear back, get that report back. How effective was this evaluation? I think it's sometimes something we forget, but it's so important. That feedback loop is, is really part of our holy grail, I think, in, in Toastmasters. And what is going on in this slide here? Possibly a, a subject for a whole workshop in itself. 
But these are just elements in a quality evaluation. So try to use both logic and emotions so that you cover the full spectrum of your recipient. You may have already got a good take on the speaker's personality when you heard him or her speak. And then you know how to balance these things. And balance here refers to the weight between uh, the, the positive and the negative. Authority is the way you uh, present your evaluation, that you're energetic, that you come across as uh, with sincerity and, and being authentic, showing your, your speaker that it's important to you to convey this message to him or her. Humor is a good thing. Always, it helps to establish connection with our audience. And language can actually do something valuable to an evaluation as well. If you use, if you use language that is interesting to listen to, you will captivate people in a different way. Okay. Yes. Now we are on to step number five. And I have called this fun, fury, and friends. So when you have spilled up some stamina and some excitement, you may feel more ready to take on challenges. Here is Tommy from Allbo Toastmasters. He is confidently handing, handling a group of European youth that is your politicians of tomorrow. They are a little older than world-renowned Greta Thunberg and an environmentalist and lobbyist Greta Thunberg, but not much. And you know the manners and the rhetorics of some young people, right? So how did he actually handle this situation? He gave them table topics Rick Furbish style. Rick Furbish was a serial club builder within Toastmasters. And he has this format very, very suited for folks that are new to Toastmasters. Everybody writes a little note about something they're willing to share about themselves. The table topic master will then pick a note one by one and let the people present something they feel comfortable sharing. It's a lot of fun. Okay, you cannot speak about VPE without speaking about mentoring. Let me just ask in this room, how many people has got a mentor or have got a mentor? Okay, seeing one. Seeing one? Hmm. Okay. And how many people have got an effective mentor program in place in their club? It's always that question, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Sometimes the most well-intended mentor-mentee relationships die out because the mentor is waiting for the mentee to initiate contact and the mentee is waiting for the mentor to initiate contact. But here is a much needed matchmaking service and it's only for mentors and mentees, okay? It's called the Odyssey Project. It's for people who are serious about mentoring, whether they're looking for a mentor that comes from a specific region or comes from a specific profession or whether they are seeking for it, um, or whether they are looking for a mentee to actually mentor and, and want to contribute the best to the mentoring experience. So I can only say some of the best Toastmasters I've ever met had a mentor also when they were at a progressed Toastmaster age. So don't be scared to ask for help and ask for feedback. So if you want to relieve some of your club members from mentoring, here is an alternative. Okay. 
Are we all good so far? Good. We're now coming on to the second portion and those are our actual events. So speaking of mentees, I have the delight of mentoring this redhead gentleman to our right in this, this slide here. That is Martin Rusbjerg, who is currently an area director for the Western part of Denmark. This contest was organized in order to wake up a club after the summer holidays. I had been, um, I had just taken over the club president role after a short time as a club coach. So part of the remedial action we took for that club was to bring on board a, a number of active, serious and very experienced Toastmasters in order to increase the vibe um, in the club. So this event here was an example or an early example of proactive marketing and using my Toastmaster network to create excitement for this event. The content itself was a lot of fun. The contestants were actually the two table topic masters. They were each given an opportunity to ask questions to the audience within four categories. Does anyone here know Elizabeth Nostet? Yeah? Okay. Elizabeth Nostet is a She's like in the, in the top ranks of, of Toastmaster nowadays. Um, very, very skilled Toastmaster. She actually answered a question, taking the, run, taking the role as a nun on a bicycle in a state of road rage. It was just hilarious. So let us just ask the audience, what do you think of this poster? Barbara? I find it very inviting. I, with this red curtain in the background, I feel like I'm getting invited to something really spectacular. And then the curtain is going to open and ta-da, big stage time. Super, great, thank you. Gustav. I really like it. Uh, my only comment is maybe for people who are outside of Toastmasters or the division, because I know that Martin, he's hilarious, but maybe someone outside uh, won't know that automatically from this picture that these two guys are probably are going to be really funny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Isabella, we had an exercise like this uh, a few weeks ago, but now is the time to feedback, give feedback. And yes, <clears throat> I also found this post inviting and my first impression was that it sounds as something very, it looks as something very energetic and fun will happen. I guess with the mics and there's a lot of, you know, uh, they, they associate me somehow to some stand up somehow the mics and then you think people are gonna sit, talk and it will be fun. So this is what my, uh, yeah, my my Im impression was that it looks like something fun is going to happen. Okay. So, Robert, do you want to have a, a say as well? Yes. I don't know either of the, the two speakers. I don't know. I know the, the table, to table topics can be really challenging for most of the um, speakers especially here in uh, in germany our uh, our club uh, also and um, i think something like this would uh, would be really really inviting okay to, to participate yeah great does anyone have any additional pro uh, comments It's nice. We have so many people now that I have to switch between two screens. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 
this was actually a photo taken after the event. So it did work out. There was a lot of excitement. And with a photo like this, following up after an event like this, I posted like a really um, thankful and grateful post on Facebook and just gave credit to everybody. And uh, it's, I think it, it helped to create some of that vibe that was so necessary for this uh, Lulio Toastmasters at the time. Okay. Now let's try a different type of post here. We have a membership building workshop. Some of you may recognize Lorena Berquist, who was a the division director for division B uh, last term. She was very supportive of our, our efforts with Lulio Toastmasters. And this is testament to this important takeaway, like nurture your support system and your support system may nurture you. When it comes to workshops, of course you want to let your workshop holders decide what they want to cover. But depending on time, you may want to try to have a say as well. How much do they actually want to cover here? Okay. So Peter, what do you think about this goldfish jumping out of the bowl? Does that convey the message for you? Which one of the Peters? Oh, Peter Rasmussen, sorry. Yeah. So I'm just a bit, so I, I think it's look, it looks very pretty and you have the contrasting colors of yellow, orange and blue. They are contrasting colors, like eye candy. Mm -hmm. But I'm a bit confused of, you know, what can I expect from this? Um, yeah. But it, the aesthetics is very nice and, and calming in some sense. So I like that quite a lot. Okay, thank you. So let's hear from the other Peter. I think I would echo a point that my co-Peter has just made. I, I, I'm drawn in by the poster. I find myself thinking, yes, the, I drawn to the fish, but what are the fish there for? So I think this is probably a good thing because it puts a question into my mind. And if a question's in your mind, then you're looking for somebody to give you a clue to the answer. So I, I guess you've then got your first step of engagement. And you may be spurred to reach out and ask questions. Yes. Hopefully. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Now we come on to the more courageous things and interclub debate. So we try to apply some learnings from Copenhagen Advanced Toastmasters, who, uh, which has a lot of experience with Oxford style debate. And Lulio Toastmasters challenge expert Toastmasters for this debate. So here we have our motion, should the age of the sale of all alcohol be raised to 21? So in essence, uh, the motion is what the two teams are debating about. One team will be advocating in favor of the motion and the other is against the motion. To really explore the, the strengths of Oxford style debates, I would really recommend you to go to Copenhagen Advanced Toastmasters because they do it on such a regular basis that they have acquired quite a, a bit of um, proficiency in this. But in short, every captain, uh, every captain of the team prepares a speech. And let's just have a look at our team here. So the entry speech by the captain is actually the closest to what we know as a prepared speech. Everything that comes thereafter will have some impromptu elements to it. And that is because the second and the third team members, they would each cover a certain argument in their speech, but they would also try to come back at the other team. So in essence, you, you let the debate evolve in this. And eventually the captain will, will sum up with the strongest arguments for his or her case. The winning team is measured by those who have managed to swing the audience the most. Here's a little comment. Was it fair that our Lulio Toastmasters captain happened to be a competitive lawyer from New York? Well, maybe not so much, but it helped us quite a bit. 
right. Okay. Here is another example of just how lucky we were to have our enthusiastic division director, Lorena. She has a master's degree in storytelling and she's fond of tall tales. Can we just make a quick check about who knows what tall tales are? Please give me a show of hands. One hand, two hands, three hands, four hands. Okay. For those who are not so familiar with it in, in other countries, such as the US, it's actually called a liar's contest because you are telling a fantastic story. So to our left here, Lorena and her son, Sonny set up a workshop in January to set up our contestants for success. She does workshops professionally, so we were very fortunate to have her deliver some golden nuggets for us for free. And the tall tale contest itself was here to our right. And that took part in on Valentine's Day. That's why all the hearts are coming from. It was well received and it was a great learning division B wide. Because it was an unofficial contest, we could actually adapt some flexibility to it. And uh, I believe we had a, a contestant come in at very late in the stage and he was adopted. I was very proud to have two members of Lulio Toastmasters participate in this contest. So an important aspect or benefit from all these events was that Lulio Toastmaster members, they got exposed to bigger audiences and developed some confidence as a team. Many members did enjoy themselves trying different things. And eventually we gained a better balance between normal meetings and, and those special events. Okay, let's hear from people what they think about this poster here. So Manuel, I haven't heard from you. Yeah, this one will certainly attract some visitors. Um, we also had a similar event in our club where we had um, a church um, pastor um, priest uh, where he did some training and he told us how he comes up with his speech contest he must deliver every every sunday yeah it would certainly attract uh, it will be interesting for the uh, members uh, who are toastmasters yet but even more so for guests who come to to see this speaker yeah, that's their main reason for coming. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is a perfect way of, um, yeah, um, segueing uh, the Toastmaster Club uh, uh, activities. Okay, great. Let's hear from uh, somebody else. Mr. Craig Curtis, the man formerly known as the voice of District 95. Martha, that is a very nice poster because it, it definitely attracts the people to come in and want to work on their vocal variety because as we always say in Toastmasters, there are four different parts of the toolbox that we like to work on, vocal variety, hand gestures, facial expressions, and as we always say, dealing with the speech topics and trying to get the purpose and the message out. But definitely it's a very attractive poster to hopefully get the people in since I have been promoting that for you. <laughs> And maybe some of you noticed it's actually a workshop in the future. It takes part on Tuesday, and we would like to see a lot of folks from here on Tuesday to welcome Stefan, uh, Stefan, sorry, Stephen Svenholm. He is a formal, sorry, he is a former opera singer. Personally, I've been dreaming about a workshop like this for a long time. Because how can we say that we are decent speakers if we don't know how to properly use our voices? So I hope to see some of you for this workshop. You may have noticed that we have stepped down a little bit uh, from bigger scale events back to the club setting. And I must say after many large events in both February, April and June, involving both this 
division and to some extent the district, I'm very thankful to be back in a club setting. And let's take our last one. Valeria, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay. So what do you think of this? Okay, so I'm oh. trying to read this. Okay, at first glance, it's, it's a bit hard to tell what it is about. Mm -hmm. I don't see if it has to do with Toastmasters at all. It does say James Bond as Toastmasters, but it's yeah. a little bit <laughs> hidden away, yes. So I can't really tell what it is about. <laughs> and it does say, come see what it is about. So. Yes, it does. <laughs> Okay, um, for those of us who love PR and branding, we would want to have a Toastmaster logo on this so that we are covered, right? But I think this poster is great and the meeting theme is orchestrated by Maserati Martina. Wood, wood. So I really want to attend this meeting and you know, it's in the future. It's on next Thursday. Stefan Saho, what is your opinion about this poster? I absolutely love it because it makes me uh, curious, you know. I know what uh, 007 is and I know what James Bond is, but uh, it's difficult to make the connection to Toastmasters and that makes me curious. So great job. And of course, this top secret makes me two times more curious than only James Bond. I love it, I love okay. it. Okay, great. Okay. You see this, this staircase is coming back at us now. So let's just recap a few key points here. Building motivation is your responsibility. That's one of my main messages for today. You can actually evaluate your motivation by what you think, Add to it what you know and multiply by what you do. Remember, being active, taking action is so important for your motivation. We also looked at a five-step process where first we realize this big project we have in our mind. Then we come into a phase of planning ahead. And we get to this, oh, it's actually important to appreciate our team members. and. I think there cannot be too much appreciation. That's difficult. A value point to take away is also make sure your if evaluations in the club are effective. Don't be scared to, to step ahead and ask for something if, if you feel this was not enough. I, I needed more about um, what did the evaluator mean about this. And once you have that stamina and excitement going, you are ready to take on bigger events. And that's what we call the fun fury and friends. So when you're ready, your VPE skills, they can be used for so much more than just club meetings. And let's hear if we have some questions. Peter. I'll start you off, Martha. I was very interested in what you said about the possibility of speakers being asked what they thought of their evaluation. And I can imagine sometimes that could lead to quite a difficult situation. I've, I've known one or two speakers in the heat of the moment being quite upset by their evaluation. Have you ever had any problem in managing a situation like that? Um, I think from what I've seen, it's um, there is a tendency that we we don't talk too much about it and we just mm -hmm. go away. Maybe we're feeling disappointed. But um, I have I've used it myself in terms of trying to ask for more information. What did the evaluator mm -hmm. mean by so and so? if he or she was being not specific enough. 
I think it's a very difficult conversation um, to have. What you can do from a, a VPE point of view is that you try to have some, some sessions or presentations where you go through what you think is an important uh, aspect of evaluation. At, in that way, you have at least communicated um, to, to members what you feel is important for evaluations. But I think we should have a, I mean, we do have the, the member interest survey and we have the moments of truth um, to try to, to cover some of these aspects. But um, I think the most efficient way to go about it is try to collect the, the moments of truth and, and, and work through it in, at a club officers meeting and try to be really honest with each other. Okay, thank I you. saw some 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 hands. Uh, thank by you. Peter. The, by the by the way, you you formulated the um, uh, this thing with give the feedback to from from the speaker to the um, evaluator. I understood that you're giving your feedback if the evaluation was good or or bad, whereas in what you just uh, explained, actually is even more constructive because the speaker can should be encouraged to to ask for for more more information mm -hmm. maybe it was my uh, my understanding that uh, didn't run run uh, properly but uh, was that what 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 you meant um well what what we try to encourage in in all Toastmasters masters is to ask the evaluators to take that conversation and go to the speaker and say, how did you feel about this? Was, was I clear enough? Um, was there something I, I did not explain well enough? Um, was there, and, and by doing, and similarly, you, if we try to reach out to our speaker in advance, is there something in particular you're looking for? We are, we're showing that interest from before the meeting, during the meeting and after the meeting. Okay. So I think the onus is, is on the evaluator to some extent. Um, it's difficult to be a speaker and say, you know what, I, I think this was really not what I wanted. <laughs> Barbara. I, I, had, I understand where Peter is coming from. I got the impression you meant doing that during a meeting and the speaker got evaluated and then the evaluator was at the speaker was like, well, what did you think of this guy's evaluation? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I was under the impression it was during the meeting that this should take place. Oh, but no, no. I understand no. you now. And I think maybe that led to some of the misconceptions. Okay, great. Thank you for clarifying. Yes, I did mean it as a, um, a conversation to be had between the evaluator and the speaker with the evaluator taking and the initiative and Gustav, I sorry, I have seen your hand for a long time. Go ahead. No, no, I haven't had my hand up. Oh, that was my hand. <laughs> 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 okay. We actually do do this uh, in, our, in our club. Usually, we, we encourage that uh, whenever the, um, the evaluator, um, when we we match. The, the evaluator with the uh, with the speaker that the the speaker tells the evaluator what 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 are the, the things that uh, he should uh, um, look after mm -hmm. if there's some um, specific um, voice vocal variety or or specific topic that he need, needs uh, to uh, to focus his uh, attention on it yeah, that's a that's a good way of, of covering it as well. Um, yeah. Any other comments? No, it's Friday evening. Let me ask you a uh, a question then. And uh, I think I will I will throw this at Peter from Odense. So Peter, have you considered getting and inviting in an actor or an actress hmm. to the club? Because they uh, know a lot about stage presence. 
Right. That's actually quite a quite a good idea. We haven't in our club considered that. We held an improv workshop uh, one year ago and it was phenomenal. Like we still talk about it to this day and it's one of the best things that we did for our club, I think. I mean, at least as a single workshop thing. And I think we should do more of that. So an actor would be good. I think our problem is that we don't know who or how or where we should where we should find such an action. And it seems like silly because you could just look up on Google or something, but we haven't thought about it before. So maybe we should try. Yeah. That's a good idea. Some kind of workshop at least would be good. Yeah, I have an idea for you. There is an actor living in Odense area called Roland Müller. Oh, cool. Roland it could be an interesting chap to uh, yeah, that's invite a good idea. in. Yeah. I'll I'm not write. putting you on the spot here by, by any means. Uh, no, no, no. That's a good idea. <laughs> Okay, let's hear what ideas are brewing in the heads of people. I know you want to have that glass of wine, but it's very close by now. Let me pick on the other Peter. You need to unmute yourself, please. My principal idea, since I'm not a VP at the moment, having listened to all this, is to very carefully avoid ever becoming a VPE, because it, clearly the, the challenges are extremely encouraging. Uh, and um, the, the, the advantage of being an evaluator is I've got all these notes so I can sit down and look at them. To be honest, if, if I really have to get on the spot and say, this is the thing that I, I would like to put in, I'd like to have a go at the debates because um, I used to debate a lot. We don't do that in Toastmasters because we're careful about controversy. But I noticed that your, uh, your, your chosen topic was one that avoided the worst areas of disputation. But I think that's the thing I would like to try most. Okay, great. We can take that forward to, uh, frankly speaking, have a debate half in German, half in, in English. Yes. That, would, that would be interesting. Okay, Robert, what uh, what would be your dream event? Is this a, a table topic? <laughs> 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 Certainly looks like one. Well, <laughs> we have the big VPE, Stefan Saho here, right? So yes. we need to ask these questions and get the ideas out. I can also share an idea if you wish. I had one dream for years and years, and unfortunately, Corona interrupted fulfilling this dream. My dream is to have a long table topics evening outside on the Christmas market, where we have a glass of uh, wine and chocolate yes. and I don't know, and we do it in a very open way. So pedestrians are joining, hearing, and at some point, I can smile as a table topic a master. I can smile to um, a stranger and ask, would you like to try it? And as soon as the first one tries, others want to try as well. And we have a lot of fun. This is my dream. OK, great. Thank you, Stefan. And we have Peter coming in again. Just uh, as a, an, an addition, we actually had an outside meeting in the summer. so it's. Uh, bit warmer than in the in the Christmas uh, time but it was outside and it was phenomenal and uh, we had a lot of people it was in a park and we had a lot of people looking at us thinking like who are those crazy people uh, no random guests uh, well there were guests but no random pedestrians were joining but uh, it was very a different atmosphere outside and I can highly recommend doing such things actually I think uh, Stefan's um, idea was uh, is ph phenomenal and if I, I'll uh, pitch it to, to my, my president, I think we'll, uh, we might uh, do it. Yes, cool. We have a taker, Stefan. So Isabella, as a chess, chess player, what would be your dream event? It's not really related to chess, I guess. Or you can always do it if you find the ways. But... Actually, what I would really like to improve uh, to do is uh, to make an evaluation either 
workshop or comp like a mini competition or something because I think evaluation part probably first of all because this maybe because this is my weakest area in in when I do Toastmaster roles so then you have that motivation to improve on that and also I think it's something that both practices your well your public speaking skills but at the same time you give something to others so you learn how to do something that is useful for other people at the same time as it is useful for yourself. Um, but I don't have a, a more uh, tangible idea of what it should be, workshop, competition, but something related to that. So you leave that day and you are prepared to do all the evaluation in Toastmasters and know exactly how to build a good evaluation. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. So Barbara, you must have come across a few events in your time which one appealed the most to you and which one would you what's your dream event you just need to I, unmute you yes i am now just donned on me the house in which we have our meeting there is also a group of improvisational theater and it would be fun just to have an evening with them among each other, doing whatever, getting on the stage and having them show us how to do improv. And we would get on the stage and show them how to do a quick little speech. So that was something that is something that I would I am now going to look into. That looks very nice. Will you Agreed. share the event once you have it up and running? We'll see. <laughs> I may just join the group, the improv group. All righty. In the same house. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Gustav, what's your dream event? My dream event? That's. <laughs> I would like something that's more focused on maybe getting former members because I think a lot of people have left and. It's a shame because some people you only see at Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. So I, I, my dream event, I guess, would be some event that's related to bringing back former members, both to meet them and then also have something related to Toastmasters or something. An appreciation speakathon for former members. Yes. OK. And Thank you. So, and, and you asked me that. I've seen a lot. There are so many Toastmasters who have written books about voice, about speech presentation, about finding some of these people and bringing them back in um, for a, a workshop is another direction I will look into. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Let's hear from uh, Martina, Maserati Martina. Yes. Uh, well, like all of you said, very interesting events, which would be in any, any way very valuable for, I guess, every uh, club. We are having the, the vocal workshop, um, and that's something what they really would like to thank Marta, that she actually managed to do it. Because we, at the club level, are talking about a lot of different ideas and what would, would be nice, what kind of workshop or events. but we are kind of running out of the energy and it's so nice to have someone who is still full of uh, full of proactiveness as Marita to make this type of event happen because yeah one way it's talking about it how nice it would be but then actually put resources time reach out to people that's completely um, another level and uh, we know that this type of events actually add value to the to the club it just takes energy and the dedication to to make them um, happen to uh, to kind of balance what you need to put into it and what you are getting out of it and that's basically what i would share with you okay well thank you for those kind words i will say as with a little bit of uh, organizer sparkle that it's fun to do events you you make new friends you learn something new uh, you get new motivation for speech topics and um, i just realized that mr craig curtis has been quiet for a long time so 
let's hear from you. What is your dream event, Mr. Eventer Craig? Thank you very much, Toastmaster Martha. It, I was sitting here thinking because some people in this room don't know that, you know, I won the club ambassador program for our District 95. So I visited 222 clubs last Toastmaster <laughs> term. And I actually mentioned that the other day when I went to, where was I at? I went to, oh, I was given an invitation to come to European investment bank in Luxembourg. And they said, how did you do that? I said, there was a lot of late nights staying up to one and two o'clock in the morning. But going back to what your question was, because uh, I've seen so many different things. But what I wish more people, because I always see a divide between Germany and, and the Scandinavian countries. As it was mentioned earlier from Robert, like in Germany, I think some of the things that I've seen wouldn't work in Germany, but they're working in Denmark, and it might be the opposite way around. But to go back, I, I wish um, when we went online, I, and now I I'm starting to see it a little bit more, I wish more clubs would do joint meetings with other clubs around the world. Because my, I, that's why I like my club, The Bridge Speakers of Dusseldorf. We do a lot of different initiatives. And one of those things that we did back in May, we did a meeting, a joint meeting with a club in Japan. But I know a lot of clubs, especially in Germany, won't do this. We actually re uh, rearranged our meeting from a Monday to a Saturday morning at 10, which was really cool because you know me, I like doing club meetings on Friday, <laughs> Saturday, and Sunday. But I just wish we had more of that because then you would get to do what you said earlier about making new friends. Um, I actually gave a speech because, you know, I had just gotten back into giving speeches again and I had made a couple of connections with people there at that meeting and I just wish we had more of that here. And to go back to what Gustav said about bringing back former members, one thing that could possibly help with that, because I'll go back to my club because that's my home club now, The Bridge, because what we did was back during the summer and I actually went to Dusseldorf and I was glad it was on a Saturday. We met in the park that evening and it was like, you know, what I think someone else said about people stop like, what is this? You know, they would ask us, what is this? We like, this is a Toastmaster meeting that we're having here, which is a lot of fun. And what we do at our club now, since we've gone hybrid,